how many mistakes does this audiophile make? Firstly, how do we know that this person is an audiophile? Simple, he has a stereogram. That's what audiophiles had back in the 1960s. We can see that it's a stereogram because it has speakers on both sides. You can't see the other side, but I can. Oh, it's just a record player. Not even a radiogram costs no radio, but it is stereo, I think. It's a Philips, and you can see it better here. And here. This one was for sale at Billy Hunt, and if you want stylish items to furnish your home, the link is in the description. Anyway, this guy must surely be an audiophile. He's a man of great tastes in all aspects of life. So, who is he, and what are the mistakes he's going to make? Well, he's Richard Barrett of the Champions, a three-person team of agents of Nemesis who've been given enhanced abilities, including hearing, by mysterious monks in Tibet. It's a fun secret agent show from the 1960s, and I've put a link to further information in the description. So, let's see his first mistake. But before that, notice that music is already playing. Well, firstly, there's no such composer as Grassini. If there is, then that's news to Google. There is, of course, The Four Seasons by Vivaldi, and that, of course, is always worth a listen. Also in versions by Nigel Kennedy and by Max Richter. So why the fake LP? It seems like more trouble to have this made up than to use a record that exists already. Copyright, perhaps? I don't know. There is actually a London octet. Several London octets, probably. That's why you should give your band a distinctive name. This one is probably fictional, though. This isn't Richard's mistake, but the label has no catalogue number. Nor copyright information. Nor... All rights of the producer and of the owner of the work reproduced reserved. Unauthorised copying, hiring, lending, public performance and broadcasting of this recording prohibited. And it's one shocker after another. There seems to be no inner sleeve. And if there is an inner sleeve, then the open side is facing outwards. Every audiophile knows that the opening should be uppermost, so there's no way for dust to get in. You could face the opening of the inner sleeve towards the spine of the outer. I can't think of any problem with that, except maybe it's harder to get in. I sold my record collection years ago, so I don't know. Whoops. <laughs> the second shocker is that Richard touches the playing surface. He touches the playing surface. Surely any trained and qualified agent of Nemesis should know that you never do that. It doesn't matter how clean your hands are, you're going to leave grease and dead skin on the surface of the record. Maybe he likes clicks, scratches and surface noise. I read the comments on my videos. It seems that some people do. Richard goes on to demonstrate how a record should be held correctly by its edges. Shame he didn't do that from the start. I'm just going to go back to how the record should be taken out of the sleeve, if not by touching the playing surface. The trick is firstly, don't lose the inner sleeve. <laughs> you can take that out how you like. With the record in its inner sleeve, bow the sleeve outwards so that it doesn't touch the playing surface, reach your hand in and touch the label with your fingers and wedge the edge against your thenar eminence. This lump is called the thenar eminence. I had to look that up. It's from ancient Greek, apparently. Holding the record again by its playing surface, Richard puts it on the turntable. Hang on. Remember I said to notice that music was already playing? There's already a record on the deck. This is not good. He's just messed up his vertical tracking angle. And let's not mention the stylus rake angle, which is also in a mess. If this guy actually is an audiophile, he's not making a very good job of it. So I'm coming to the conclusion that admirable though his secret agent work may be, stylish though his apartment may be, insouciant though his demeanour may be, and lovely though the polished wood cabinet of this record player may be, he isn't actually an audiophile, merely a hi-fi enthusiast. And look at this. The turntable inside is an auto-changer. This would make any self-respecting audiophile run for the hills. 
are run back towards their own particular audio nirvana. But hey, it can play both 16 and 78 RPM records, as well as the normal 33s and 45s. I can't quite see it in the photo, but I presume the cartridge is a flipper, because 78s need their own kind of stylus. Anyway, this is just a bit of fun. But my question to you would be, what mistakes do you see audiophiles, hi-fi enthusiasts and simple record-playing music lovers making? I'll bet there are plenty. Let's play the scene out. We've called to collect your carpet, sir. This is my... <laughs> At least he didn't spill his drink. See you soon. <laughs>